everybody, Brian Kelly back with the Boomer Video <coughs> uh, Hour, and I'm here to uh, say hello on the big screen before I shrink myself down and put myself in the corner like I do most of the time, but I, th I feel it's more personal to say hello on the big screen, although I will be back on the big screen in a moment to show you why I'm wearing this exotic, high-tech looking jacket. What does that logo mean? Is it a new anti-gravity Kelly Space Company? Could be. Stay tuned. First, uh, I'm going to switch to the small, uh, the other screen so we can be coherent. So, where are we? We're, we're here. We're, first thing we always do here is talk about the screenshot or the thumbnail. And today we are coattailing like everybody else. Uh, should be on Lou Elizondo's new book, which we have linked right here on the page. Um, <clears throat> if you want to buy that and spend money on it, since we're riding his coattails. And um, well, first we explain the phone, uh, the uh, thumbnail, because it, I make it first, unlike everybody else who makes it last, because it provides me with inspiration to actually do something instead of just thinking about making another video. So uh, let's go over this quickly. Uh, first off, we are ripping off uh, a loose book cover, which is a nice design. Uh, very good. I like how it's laid out. Uh, you know, very symmetrical. Nice choice of colors. And I have been wanting to do a video... I've, you know, I've done 25 videos on this stuff or something, and I didn't do one yet with the, uh, you know, the money shot, as it were. That's the most famous UFO, UAP picture, and I don't have a video with that on it, even though all these articles that will be coming out and have come out in the past uh, use that image, and I should be uh, glomming on to that while I'm doing it now. And uh, I like his one-word title. Uh, I have an I, you know, I think of the word inevitable a lot. He says imminent. And he's saying it for another purpose entirely. I'm saying what I'm saying, my ideas about how these things do work, might work, should work, etc. Probably most of them, not all. Uh, it is in, it's inevitable that I will be right. Why else would someone make a video if not to be cool or something? So his one word, my one word, um, and I add on, but my angle is light bubbles, inertial mass reduction, a rotating glare, which is an object, you know, a bone of contention, which also has come up again and again and again, and it just did again. And um, so it's time to make this video with this thumbnail. And, of course, the big, in quotes, ironic, not really anti-gravity, just acts, just happens to act just like it. That's the best I can do for you, folks. Uh, and 99% of the speed of light. All right, feasible now. Logical, think it through with me. If you haven't done so already, I guarantee you, you will be. Because why? Because it's inevitable. All right. So, uh, I think we're going to put me back on the screen for a moment. And by the way, Elizondo, I'm, you know, I'm not saying he is, uh, agrees with me or anything like that. Um, so let me, let me get, put my face up here again, briefly. Uh, do I want to do the big screen yet? Probably not. No, let's go back Look at the tab, and it's all in logical order, believe it or not. So, we have discussed that. And, oh, sorry, for, I almost skipped the opening benediction, the words of wisdom that we all live by here. Let's listen, shall we? Connect, please. From my uh, contacts and so on, uh, I, I think 
although there will be enough information coming out to finally lay to rest that this is not a tinfoil hat subject and there's reality to it. And uh, <clears throat> the government is making a concerted effort to, to uh, learn more about it. Um, <clears throat> I think any truly deep state increase knowledge is likely not to come out. I don't see all the barriers falling. Understand. Words to live by and a guiding principle here, folks. We understand they can't tell us everything and maybe they'd like to tell more and all that good stuff. Uh, but reality is reality. They have their jobs to do and so do I have my job to do, which is to try to nag people into admitting what they probably already know. When they knew it, I don't know. Did I help them out here? Maybe, I don't know. But I'm going to push it as hard as I can in the private sector for the next, uh, my life inspect expectancy, which is pretty good, <clears throat> despite my advancing age. So we're, all, uh, so we did that. And all right, first we're going to say, oh yeah, back to the uh, uh, Lewisms. And we have to credit uh, Chris Mellon here, too, as much as I like to rip him down in Twitter sometimes for some of his ridiculous views. We do have to give him credit for what he did here, along with Lou. And this is their big week, so let's, uh, let's admit it. That's the reality. So we, um, oh yeah, what I'm going to do now is, oh, there's something about this, another thing about this book. I saw a preview of... Uh, where he was talking about this little bubble around the ship, okay? He didn't say light bubble. I'm not implying he did, blah, blah. Not, all disclaimers, all that. Uh, <clears throat> and, uh, you know, you can assume I'm giving them now, cause I, and I'll say I did. But I'm saying, of course, those are light bubbles. We all know that. But some of us can't say it. That's fine. I'll say it for you. In a moment, believe me, it'll be said. Uh, but so, uh, what was my, oh yeah, between that driving this video, an extra driver, I saw a snippet of him reading his book. That's what it was. So that pushes me over the edge. I'm completely triggered. And then, you know, I only saw two snippets. I, I, um, I'm waiting to just see what everyone else says because they're going to look at every comma up Oxford comma, paragraph, all that. And then maybe I'll get it on video, uh, audio book maybe, probably later. So, oh, what I wanted to say is, yeah, I heard him say, okay, let's put me back on the screen. Another part he was reading there, it's just such a small world, isn't it, folks? He mentions that he lived on Kent Island. Who the hell left... Who ever heard of Kent Island before, everybody? A lot of people hear of it. Even Americans, and uh, even, uh, you know, any anybody? Well, what it is, it's a small island in the Chesapeake Bay. You go across the Chesapeake Bay from D.C., the swamp area, Maryland. And um, there's Kent Island. And uh, I know it because my grandfather, see, I have to tell this story. My grandfather's, my grandfather passed away, Kelly side, before I was born. But his brother was like a substitute grandfather. And uh, he lived on Kent Island after he retired. And, uh, you know, uh, I didn't, I kind of forgot about all this till I got into this, this recent interest in pr propulsion, I guess, if you could generalize it. But he was a <clears throat> he was in he was in the business. He was a lawyer for the original, you know, an an aviation group that helped set up I th the Treaty of Rome, all the original airline, you know, what countries have rights to fly over what other countries and all that sort of stuff. And before that, he was president of what's now called U.S. Air, which was then called Allegheny Airlines. So, 
even though I have zero aerospace background, I'll cling to that. And where was he from? Well, he was, when I met him, well, he's from Pittsburgh, of course, originally, but where are we here? You gotta move this way to go this way, so you'd have to go this way to go this way. When he retired, he moved out to Kent Island, and we would go and visit him, of course, on the way to Fenwick Island, which their side of the family had ocean front, or, you know, seashore, some were ocean front, some were not, places down on Fenwick Island and Seaview. Anyway, we'd all stop on the way to, you had to, to get to Ocean City, you had to go past Uncle Ed's place. That's the strategy. The kids will have to visit us and the cousins from back home in the hillbilly town. So I got this, my mother made this, went through the trouble of this, so I'm showing it off. This is the Kent Island flag on my coat. That's the whole point of wasting your time for a few minutes here. But it's an interesting place. It's sewn over the logo of this other thing, so it looks pretty far out. I never wear it, not that often because it's white and I would mess it up. But uh, <clears throat> I'm wearing it today in honor of the swamp. And time's gone by. So forget all this now. Let's um, go back to, yes, let's, let's get back into the substance. We use this screen for most of the substance. So now we go back to our tabs and start being substantive. There's a link for his book in the description. There's how. And if you don't know, if you just stumbled upon this uh, and you don't know the history of me and this channel and all that, I've li linked this. This will tell you everything, this web page. Link below, it'll say the name of the page is Light Pumping for an Anti-Gravity and Inertial Mass Reduction Effect. And it's my whole theory on how these things would work, might work. I've never seen one. I have no inside information. So I'm just an outsider here being right ahead of time. And I can say whatever I want on it. I'm not classified or anything. And um, so I'm going to. And besides, it should be in the public sphere. This is your so-called free energy, blah, blah, all that stuff. If they're hiding any secrets about super space travel, I'm saying mm, this is it. This is a big chunk of it. And even if it isn't, it's still right. So uh, use that uh, to your benefit. All right. So here is, I'm not going to play this, but today is the day before his book comes out. And so he's on TV already, and he's on a big show called CBS Mornings, which I wouldn't watch if you paid me, but I watched the, his little snippet here with the nauseating camera movements on top of the, the rest of it, but he, oh, he says something here at, uh, well, I'm, I'm just not going to play it. I don't want to risk, you know, it's fair use. But it's not worth playing a little snippet that you all saw anyway. Where he says, there's, at some point, there's going to be interest in how these work. I mean, yeah, there's a whole universe of things to think about with this so-called disclosure of intelligent life in the universe, etc. and so forth. I'm only interested, well, mostly, I'm interested in it, but mostly in a small little piece on that web page. All right, I'll stick to that part, and, you know, that's it. You have enough other people commenting on everything else. So, we went over, here's our little piece of the bubble he was talking about, and we're going to get into that in detail. And this is just the uh, <clears throat> thumbnail again that I've been wanting to make for a long time a video with that thumbnail. 
but it can't be repetitive of everything else. So here's a new angle. And, uh, you know, I had Twitter moments on this for years now. This goes back uh, five years. And uh, it's the same thing. We're going to look at this image in very in extreme detail, folks. I will get to the substantive part. Well, let's do it right now, shall we? Now, I made this thing, what, five years ago. Um... Uh, with this image, this famous image. I took it and cut it and tilted it. Um, this is when it, it rotates. It rot Apparently it rotates to this position as it's floating above the clouds with a whole fleet of guardian orbs or something. And uh, so what's going on here? That's what I want to know. That's what I'm into that's why you're here, probably. So let's look at what I was saying five long years ago. Um, what this thing was called, and this is just to put all over Twitter and splatter all over the place so people know what might be happening and who is saying it. There's always a little hidden watermark. Not uh, too obvious, but showing some ownership of the general idea, which you can't own. This is nature, folks. You can do it your way, patent your little way. That's fine. You'll do it. We'll all do it. And then next week, someone will patent a better way, you know. So, for what it's worth, this is just a general idea thrown out there. Gimbal UFO propulsion upon information and belief, rumors, gossip, rank hearsay, and speculation. We go through our steps here. If I put it in steps, it reminds me of my engineering days. And it's simple for people to put things together. Step one, ambient cold light absorbed, sucked out of the air or space itself. All right, that's what the skin on it does. That's what the so-called reactor, they were talking about uh, this particular month a lot, with the McCandless UFO and the Bob Lazar UFO, and the word reactor was used a lot. Um, so it's, yeah, you know, you could pull it just through the skin only or through right through the middle, too. Um, any which way you want to do it, as long as you do it. And uh, so, that's step one. Two, antenna on belly and highly absorbent yet photoluminescent skin to absorb and emit light, for example, vanta black for in, graphene for out. Those are materials uh, made out of graphene, basically. A carbon atoms in a hexagonal uh, form and uh, you can be stacked into two layers. A lot can be done with it. There's other videos on the channel about that. And uh, so, yeah, yeah, put that, you know, just, you know, yeah, yeah, every other atom is Vanta Black to pull it in. The next one is Graphane to blow it out. Because that, that'll, you know, between those two, you've got every other wavelength there is. Especially in an Earth sky with a lot of visible around the sun that throws out... Uh, <clears throat> tons of visible and heat ish heat you know right around the visible the heat the ultraviolet the infrared that stuff sucks it up and moves it around and spews it right out and so that's for example what you'd want to do if you were an entry level sh civilization shaved ape or just somebody trying to make a trillion dollars on flying cars Step three, light wave guided through and around skin with metamaterial, with metagraphene, vanta black, magnesium, bismuth, zinc, element 115, what have you. Step four, light, <coughs> parentheses, mass equivalence. I hope there's no argument there. There isn't. That's Einstein, not me. 
light emitted through skin and purported emitters. So it comes in one side, goes out the other. Okay, right, easy concept, right? In, out, in, through, out, in, through, out, and around. You want to make sure you've got a coating all around you. For reasons we'll discuss again later. Step five. Kraft's mass is offset by overwhelming loss of mass equivalence. Step six, it could be pumped through. Whoops, lost my place here. Through. Could be pumped around or right back out as needed cell by cell. Remember, you're an advanced species, okay? Which could be us in 50 years, according to me which it will be. I won't be here, though. Anyway, it could happen quicker, because this stuff can be done on a small scale. Uh, whatever pumps best. Where am I? Step seven. Radiation pressure might feel like force field at rest or used for bumper cars defense. Could bubble wrap and move objects. Well... That sure was prescient when it comes along to these MH370 videos, isn't it? You wrap it up and you take it with you. Tie a bow around it, put it in the trunk, take it to grandma for Christmas, whatever it is. It's the, it, you know, you wrap it up, put it in a nice cylindrical bubble, shoot that thing. Have the thing, the thing, you know, it's like a train laying tracks in front of itself. It's going right down a cylindrical bubble of light tube to wherever the hell it is going. Uh, San Diego Island or whatever the hell, no, Diego Garcia. Or, uh, you know, up to the mothership, whatever. Uh, so that's step seven. And yeah, it could be used as a force field. That's what's flinging your space debris off, radiation pressure. Um, there's a frequency for everything to kick it off your skin, out of your way. That's what those uh, laser beams do and radiation weapons and things like that. Uh, a lot of people know more about those than I do. But that's what it's, you know, basically doing. You're pushing with it at some point, but you have to have the right wavelength for the right object. Uh, used for bumper cars, defense, yeah, maybe, I don't know, you know. And uh, people slip right off that. And it says bubble wrap or move objects. Yeah, that's how your Cessna got moved uh, from the Baha uh, Bermuda Triangle to Miami in record time because you got caught in the wake, and possibly. Step eight, a mass of craft is far less affected by gravity, if at all. G-force is mitigated. Yeah, that's what the uh, mass equivalence is for. That's why a piece of plastic lying on the floor can suddenly rise up into the atmosphere. Why? Because it's pumping light. How is it pumping light, Kelly? Because it's got gas in it that pumps light, molecules, that can be gases when they're pumping light. They can also be frozen or solid, but when they're pumping light, they're moving uh, mass too. They're freeing mass from gravity and inertia and whatever is attached to their mass, which in this case of a balloon, uh, the ma it's captured. It's captured It's because the stuff's inside it, but it could be in the skin. It could be here. It could be there, whatever. Um, so, step at nine. Air never touches craft. Never. Never. Never let your craft's surfaces touch dirty earth air or moon dust air or Venus gas air. You keep that, rubble, that bubble wrapped around you. Keeps the crap away. So you can play safely. So you wrap it around it. You have a flow going around you. 
you have the light coming through and, you know, in and out for, to lose more weight than you need to in whatever gravitational field you happen to be in, which is apparently easy because a balloon can do it, a water cloud can do it. These spaceships, the government is saying, not me, are flying around, floating around and all this stuff. That's how they do it. Most of them. Number 10. Craft is effectively in a propelling bubble of light. Yeah. That's my conclusion back then, and uh, I'm sticking to it. So that was that ancient old thing, and that most of that holds true. And now we're selling book covers with it, and we'll see where that goes. It could be a huge deal. Uh, if not, it was a... It's a noble effort to step along the path. So, oh yeah, and that gets us into the rotating glare stories. That uh, that came back up, and um, and so I, you know, that's been around for years. You either know what that is, or you don't. If you're listening to this right now, or you'll find out if you're interested. Pardon me, I'm taking a sip. So, years ago, I made a corny joke after watching a Lebowski movie too many times about the rotating glare. Sometimes you rotate the glare, sometimes the glare rotates you, dude. All right, here we go. Let's click on that. and Hear no sound, but see some motion. Okay, that's that was funny. I've reposted it a thousand times. It might not be that as funny anymore, but it's kind of funny. All right, so, yeah, your glare is going to rotate your stuff. So we can say, you know, it's a joke with some truth to it or some truth with some joke to it. You make the call. And uh, as you should have seen by now, everybody, this video I made that explains how glare and rotation are related. And it's basically based on, well, <clears throat> this video, link below by Fail, Fair, <clears throat> Fail Forward Research, better known as Wayne Ojala, that shows you with your own eyes. He repeats the famous classical gravity experiment called the Cavendish experiment where two weights are placed on a pendulum and they jiggle around as the earth moves around. I forget exactly how that goes, but that's roughly how it goes. And <clears throat> everyone knows what that is to the point where they forget it. And what's Wayne demonstrates in this video and attributes to uh, scientists with papers linked below, linked there, linked here, described repeatedly. The guy's names are Lewis Rancourt and Philip Tattersall. They combined, they <clears throat> collaborated on one, you know, one set of papers. And there's another guy in Hungary called Libor Newman, and he took this same experiment and added some numbers to it. And what it shows is if you take the Cavendish experiment, shine some lights here and there on it, it distorts the experiment. And yes, you can correct for moving air and correct for this and that to the point where you have to conclude reasonably that light is affecting gravity in the immediate area of that, those dumbbells or whatever, those slabs, he does both, um, of stuff with mass that are heavy, that all you do is shine these lights on it and it's affecting the movement. So that glare from these lights is literally rotating those dumbbells, all right? So I, I don't want to hear, hear too much more about rotating glare. Glare can't rotate something. Click on his videos. Like, share, and subscribe, etc. And so forth because 
this is your future, folks, whether you like it or not. It's your present reality as well. Light matter. Light matter interaction in a gravitational field. That's what you're looking at with this stuff. All right? Um, so when you see bubbles there, they're not giving you a warp signature, are they? No, they're giving you frequencies. You can even see it. I don't want to argue about it too much more. So, at this point, we get the little stop sign here, which means I have to stop and prepare something for the next part of the show. <clears throat> I have to do it ahead of time. You'll see in a minute. So, let us go over to the thing and pause the video. I'll be right back. All right, I did what I had to do here. Didn't take too long. Wasn't too painful. Didn't make too many mistakes. Well, let's see how it goes over with you. What is it? All right, here we're going to take a close-up look at this thing. And repeat the same thing I always do, but this will make it a little more visceral, I think. You might remember this a little bit. People like these things, at least I do. What we're going to do is do a little sketching on the drawing as we yabber. So, let's put on our old man glasses and find the arrow. There it is. So, we're looking at this thing here. What is going on here, Admiral, General, Chief of Air Force, NASA Joint Chiefs? We don't know, sir. All right, so let's figure this out then. Hmm, shall we? Let's do it. All right, what we have here is a garden variety flying saucer alien advanced intelligence from outer space with superior technology. So what would a guy like that do in a case like this? Well, he'd be floating along, I don't know where, it, I, where was this one, the Atlantic beach, doing his normal Runs of the uh, shaved ape uh, <clears throat> frontiers with the sea. See what everyone's up to. Yeah, I don't think this is a tourist if it's bringing guard orbs. But anyway, so what are we doing? How are we floating? How are we flying? What's going on here? It's rotating. How does it rotating? Well, now we'll start sketching. We're going to use the visceral spray paint lines here. And we're using this bright blue because it's in the sky where stuff is blue. Light is blue, even at night. It's light blue. You can't see it. It's not uh, the dominant thing going on, but it's still there. It's, it's, it's in those nitrogen atoms, which dominate, don't they? 78%. Of the air is nitrogen, which loves blue of all sh of a couple of shades, and so does water. Look, it's floating over an ocean, over some clouds. It's blue all over the place up there, even if it is light or dark. So we got we got our blue light being absorbed uh, by whatever the thing's made out of. I gave you some examples: Vanta Black wave guides, probably wave guides. You know, some kind of absorbent thing it's going to suck in at whatever it needs to so it is doing this now with this blue of the skies above the carolinas or wherever along the carolinas so it's pulling in that nice blue this nice happy little blue so it's doing that to stay afloat but to stay afloat it's also got to push out blue so we we'll use this darker blue um, <clears throat> it's absorbing and emitting uh, sufficiently for this uh, Earth at um, gravitational field to keep itself floating along, semi attached to the gravitational field. Whoops. We're going in. Yeah, we're adding arrows, uh, showing light going out. That arrow got messed up. And um, so it's, it's controlling its inertial mass. It's controlling its effective weight, not its actual mass, but its weight in the gravitational field. 
by using mass equivalent light, which comes right out of the sky, folks. It's free. It's not zero point energy, but it is free energy. Okay. <clears throat> I got to ham it up a little bit. So, uh, so I think that's all we're doing there. I think we added all our visible light. Now we're, now we're taking it away again. So let's put that, uh, that's what we're doing with the blues. All right. You can remember that, blue in, blue out, it's in a blue sky. Uh, so why would it, the heck would it do that? Well, I already told you that. So we move on to next, what's going on here? What's with this other color here? Why are we doing that? Well, I'm going to increase the size here for you because we want a nice perfect coating there. We don't want to take any chances with these wispy blues in and out. We want that thing sealed so no seagulls float or Chinese lanterns bump into it. And it's, uh, so we're going to have a nice coating. We're going to wrap that, make sure our emitting uh, waveguides or atoms or molecules or plasmons or whatever you got to control light, we're going to make sure that's wrapping it around. We're going to have a nice wrap, we're going to have a nice coating on it. I like to call it a nice a slippery light bubble. Because if something comes along, I want it to slip right off. It's going to be more slippery than ice could ever be. All right? And if it's uh, a little too big, well, we give it a nice big wavelength and push it off. If, it's, uh, if it hasn't bounced off the outer rim or just slipped off, it'll slip It'll slide away. Um, it won't even get close enough to hit you because it slipped off and around you. That's how it's going there, I think. I'm pretty sure. So we got that. Um, we're covered there, all right? We're controlling our mass. We're controlling our, not our mass, our weight in a gravitational field by using mass equivalent light to control the effectiveness of our mass in that gravitational field. And we've got a nice protective bubble around us. You know, we, we, we don't want to rely on everything to do everything. We want to double down, you know, have double down backups. Pardon me, it's time for a sip. Thank you. So we got that going on too. And lastly, what else are we going to do here? It's not lastly, but it's almost lastly. It's last, but you get a bonus. You're going to learn something here, or at least learn what I think. So, oops, wrong way. So we got our bubble on there, so we're nice and safe. Thirdly, as we saw with our rotating glare, just by shining lights on those heavy weights, the gravity <clears throat> around it is affected and the thing moves. Except this thing is controlling itself. It's shining its own light. All right? That's what you got to do in this world, folks. It's an ugly universe out there. It's a doggy dog. You got to take control of what's going on here if you want to be like them. And you got to control your own light in, through, out, and around. So you're shining your own little light. Isn't that a song? Shine your own little light. So... You're going to control the light. You're going to control, control the gravitational field around you with light. That's what this green thing does. And these things are, you know, this is advanced intelligence. They're overlaying all this stuff, all right? Just like you overlay signals on a uh, fiber optic uh, cables, and they can even do it within one beam but that's another story that's too complicated for this i shouldn't even have said that but uh, <clears throat> so let's just keep it in threes here we've got the uh, mask we, we've got the weight controlling thing the inertia controlling thing the protective bubble and now the green blob around it which are just shining out there you're pushing away light or uh, air which is, you know, 
people talk about density a lot. Well, what is density? Well, it's the amount of stuff floating around. Floating in what? Floating in light. That's what you're doing. So you increase the light there, decrease the stuff, push it away. Now you're affecting the gravitational field because light is not as affected uh, by a gravitational field is uh, as matter does. In fact, since mass... <clears throat> We know that they affect each other because we've known it since Einstein and you just saw it on the rotating gizmos. So you want to control your field here. You don't want to be subject to Earth's field, gravitational field. You want to control it. Got that? And you want to do that everywhere else. Whether you're on Earth or where you are, wherever you are. So you do that by controlling the light profile around you all right you're spraying light out there and in my opinion it disrupts gravitons i don't care if you which act in waves so whatever it is gravity is i think it's that it's being disrupted we can show it experimentally we can put a number on it like libor newman did and the number is impressive go back and see those videos and uh, so that's what you're doing there you're taking control of the situation with the green you're protecting yourself with the red and you're taking control of yourself with the blue all right and finally the addendum beyond number three look how much you just learned there but maybe number four should have been first. Maybe it's the most important point. Maybe it is the point. I don't know. Anyway, uh, point four is, what are you in here? Well, we're in the air above the Atlantic Ocean, Kelly. It's, uh, we have our temperature, our pressure. We know everything. We're the Air Force here, or the Navy, and NASA. Space Force, whatever. We gotta have things firmly in command, do you? You think you're in air, wet air. But your medium here is light, which penetrates the universe, including the atmosphere, which in this case happens to have wet air in it. So what you control is light. The medium is light. This, hap this light happens to have stuff in it, as most of it does. In outer space, it's mostly light. It's the cold temperatures of space and the light going through it. And there's stuff floating around. Yeah, there's a hydrogen atom every parsec or whatever it is. There's stuff out there. And, of course, when you get into solar systems, it's full of it. But what you're in is light. And you got to get that through your heads, folks. That's your medium. And I'll get into what it's not, which is space time, in a moment. That rant, that's the other part of the rant, part two and a half. So that's where we are. One, two, three, four, four being the medium is light. Okay. Next slide. Who am I telling that to myself? So we're moving on. Do we take a break? I don't know. Oh. Let's take a happy little break from that. This looks something like what I see in my mind's eye sometimes. It's just a little, it's not right, it's just a piece of it, it's not, a, it's not really. It, sometimes, there it is, it's controlling the light, there it is, it's moving the light around it. Now it's back in, now it's back out. Now it's around it, now it's, you know. So, another sip, indulge me. This stuff throws me off my schedule, so I'm sipping coffee in the daytime, midday. Uh, where are we? All right, we're done with that. That's just a little cleanser. So now we're moving on to the space-time rant. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, this is a kind of a 
cold, hard jump without an easy segue. So we're getting into uh, the difference between warp drive and what I'm talking about. So we're going to use foil Ashton Forbes here. And he's referring to Peter Thiel being on Rogan's show talking about uh, warp drive and space communism and stuff. So I had to pounce on that. That hit six triggers. And I answered to him. <clears throat> Here's my, I'm quoting myself. I prefer space capitalism. Achievable with feasible things rooted in reality instead of fanciful theories based on ridiculous equations, based on 1960 television, space operas. All right, I've seen too much of it this week, and it boils over, and that happened right when this book came out, right when a video was due, etc. Bold print, Theo has not been well served by his eyes and ears if he is still thinking about that nonsense. Last time I checked, his top, top science guy was more interested in Yimby, yes, in my backyard, San Francisco zoning ordinances, my goodness, for the sake of equity, than anything more tangible than another stupid app. So you do have some big eggheads out there that are going down the wrong road. Okay, that's my point. Does he want a flying a car or not? A guy in the defense business might want to keep his spot before the Chinese run right over us with superior optomechanics and photonics, which if you follow me on X, formerly known as Twitter, which I recommend you do, you're going to see that every day I'm pumping out the latest scientific research, and a lot of it comes from China, doesn't it? Too much. Uh, unless this stuff's being worked on behind closed doors in Ohio or somewhere, whatever, we don't know. See, that's the thing, we don't know. So we have to assume the worst case, like you do about us inside your bunkers and stuff. Oh, they're going to blow each other up. Well, what the hell do you do all day? All right. So forgive us if we, you know, don't salute every time. The light continuing with me. The light matter interaction in, in a gravitational field in bold is what matters in the big game. I don't write the rules, folks, but I can read them. Also, fixed it for you, meaning fixed your uh, drawing, which we can't blame him for. He's relatively new to the game. This thing, I swear I've seen that, saw this on Omni Magazine back in 1994 or something. New breakthrough. This is the same old stuff they get from Star Trek. A guy wrote a equation on a television show. God bless them both, them all. But the equation every which way show also proves it's unworkable. It's fun to think about. But I'm in the real world. I'm stuck here. And I want to do something with it. Okay? So I need tangible stuff. So that's why I'm stuck on my um, broken record repeat. So I take his... I take this drawing here. And I had too much... It triggered me again. Triggered six times in three days. Perfect setup for another video. And I correct it. And what do I, how do I do that? All right. You can, re, you can, that's, this image is linked below. I take, let's see, where, do we, where should I start? I guess we'll start with the ambient me, medium. Again, they're in space. And they call it space-time, which, if anything, is a tiny plank-length thing, if not smaller. 
and impossible to work with. It is, relative to human beings, it is smaller than the universe is large. How are you going to get your tweezers on that? First off, space-time's a thing. It's a mathematical construct. It's not a thing. If it were a thing, it would be in a test tube, and they'd be experimenting it on it in laboratories. But these people, uh, science in general, as we've seen especially lately, and engineers do it too, uh, they conflate mathematical uh, concepts with physical objects. And there's a word for that, and we're going to get into that too. And that's going to be fun. And you're going to hear that from me every day for a long time because I've found it before and then I lost it and then I found it again, making this, uh, preparing for this. I could not remember it. I couldn't find a way to find a way. And now oh, I'll, I might, ta I, I don't get tattoos, but if I did, it might be that. So our ambient medium, we correct this. X, we cut cross out contracting space. Cross that out. Throw it out. And replace it with, quote, ambient light medium. And the ambient light medium here, oh, we, we should have started here. They're calling this York time, and I'm calling it ambient light medium, not underlined in bold space time. So we go, we start there, that's what we're working with. So over here, we don't contract space we don't expand space behind us. In front of us, we pull the ambient pull. P U L L L L L. We pull, calm down, the ambient light medium in. And we pull it through this thing. They call it an exotic matter ring. They never tell you what it is. Never. And if they try, it's a secret sauce where they, you know. Oh, yeah. But I name what it is. It's a light pumping skin and body with, made of metamaterials. Waveguides, plasmonics, which is stuff we have now. Okay? Not used right yet, but I'm not talking about secret sauce. Down the road. Exotic energies. All this, all the... <clears throat> hand waving they do all right it's we're done with that all right it's time to admit it so we're pulling it through and we're expanding instead of expanding space we're pumping it out we're absorbing and emitting light which permeates space and everything in space period paragraph Endo story. All right, so uh, I read the t post that goes along with it, so I think we can move on from this thing. And uh, here's a better view of it, <clears throat> another view. And uh, here's a guy milking something to death, which is what they are doing with that stupid... I mean, you got you got to consider other stuff. You think that's outside the box. You think that's new thinking. But it's old thinking based on a TV show where you conflate mathematical concepts with physical objects. And that's been beaten to death. And how far has it gotten? Okay? Open your eyes outside the outside the box. That's what you got to do. If you're not restricted by an, uh, an MBA, an NBA, some of you are restricted by NBAs too on top of that, but uh, stop milking that. That's been milked and a lot of other things have been milked. Who's that guy look like? Boy, he looks like a couple of guys, doesn't he? Milking that thing and high heaven. All right. Uh, this gratuitous object is here to make the point again. It's linked below. It's it's the scale of the universe. It shows how things go. We're one meter. The whole universe is 10 to the 35 meters. 10 with 35 zeros behind it. 
big. That's how big it gets that we know of. That changes all, you know, I, I think it changed again. And how small is it? Well, it gets to 10 to the... Oh, I said that wrong, didn't I? It's, po it's, it's 10 to the positive 26 big. But it's 10 to the minus 35 small. That's zeros. That's point one zero 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 of a meter, which we're roughly a meter, two meters ish, and um, one to two meters. So it's smaller than it is large, and you think you're going to go down there and tell the virtual particles what to do? All right, good luck. All right. Why don't you stay in your own playground in the nanometers where light is and even the smallest light you can still manipulate. It's harder. It's more dangerous. And the bigger light is very big, bigger than us. Football fields, miles and miles, whatever it is, when it starts getting very cold, which space is full of it. So you're dealing with with things, using things that are within our scope of scale. That's all I'm asking. Be realistic. I know your big brain physicist that like to mess around in uh, virtual land down at the bottom of the bottom of the bottom. But give us a break up here. And that can't... Uh, now, we don't write it off, but, uh, you know, we just want to do something practical in, re in our, I hate to say reality, because it's not the reality around us. How's that? How's that? Uh, the locality of the reality. <clears throat> I just made that up just now. All right, so uh, that's what I'm trying to drive home again. To some of these very bright people. Oh, here's Kevin Knuth here. That are still repeating these, you know, the it's not dogma, but it's a bumper sticker of space time and warp drive. Alright. Despite not seeing any sig any signatures, despite not having even a They'll be the first to tell you. A remote idea on where do you get that energy. I'm telling you where you get that energy. And you can't dispute it. It's in every photon all around you, everywhere. You take it, you use it, you put it right back. If you do it smoothly, like it's rotating and these flying saucers do, you're not getting huge explosions. You're getting one photon at a time, very quickly. In, through, out. How quick can you do that? You can do that in easy now in, what's a balloon do it in? A femtosecond. That's a second. Point zero 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 times a second. You're not going to hear that. That's not going to explode. A balloon isn't shooting flames out the back, but it's doing stuff that fast. It's moving light that fast. All right, and it does it on, you know, stupidly. What if you had it down to the, what if you made that, made it? What if you were in control of that? That's what you should be. That's what I'm proposing. That's what I'm saying can be done. Like, share, subscribe. So he's, uh, and I'm going to give this guy all the credit in the world. He's a mainstream, tenured uh, physics guy, uh, astrophysicist. So he's not doing this full time. So he's not going to have it completely drilled down all the way yet. He, I'm sure he wishes he had time to do it. That's what he says. So he does what he can do. And so do the rest of these guys at Scientific Coalition for... UAP studies, link below, especially uh, this, this is a very good video, with your host, Michael Glosson, PhD, and he's a good host on there, 
But I have to comment in the comments. Because he's right over the target. Folks, he's so close. He want, He can taste it. He can see it when he looks out his window. He can feel it when he goes to work. When he goes to church. When he pays his taxes. But he still has to throw in the old, uh, well, it's still, you know, the space time and the warp stuff, okay? Well, it hasn't been thrown out. Has it? I say throw it out. Or at least consider doing, you know, run through it in your mind without that extraneous stuff which is from a TV show. Just because a guy wrote a bunch of, bunch of them, mostly guys, writes equations around it, and every time they prove it can't work anyway, just a new angle on how it can't work. And then people think they can build something around a mathematical concept. That's like saying I'm going to build a new kind of car around the equal sign. Huh? No, you're going to build it around something you can measure, like a meter per square second, whatever the hell the velocity is. So, let's get on to my eloquent comment here. And this came up just a few days ago, too. So, they're all piling on top of each other. So, that means it's time to make a video. Quote me. Quote, he's right about the light matter interactions in a gravitational field, even though he doesn't put it exactly that way, but he should. Because that's what it is. That's the more physical physics term. The ability to measure those is, uh, will reveal what is happening. Because he's talking about light and gravity and how we can measure that. And, but he's saying it's coming from a warp bubble, which it isn't. It's just, it is what it is. Until you can show that it isn't, I'm saying it. Elizondo almost said it. Everybody lo observing these things, they even changed the flipping... Five utterly predictables. What was it? The five observables to no signatures till somebody starts spamming them saying, hey, those signatures, those frequencies are the signatures. The light is the signature. The stuff that looks like a little bit of heat, that's ambient light. Of course, it's not going to stand out like a big explosion. They're using what they're going through. They're doing what they should be doing. They're doing what I predicted. That's why I call them the five utterly predictables. Anyway, so he's talking about those, um, what they're observing. And what they're observing agrees with me. I don't see it agreeing. You know, it's, it's not contradicting. I'll give them that. It's not contradicting warp bubbles. And they'll go through gyrations to why a... I love this one. I heard it again and again. The last couple, three times in the last week, whatever it was, serious ruminations about how an object that can split space time, which means you can go right through those plank levels, baby. You don't care. They brush right off you. How a thing like that's going to come out and bump into visible light and make it shift red and make it shift blue. I think you're going to be a little smoother than that, aren't you? In one of my old videos, I did a comparison to this, to seeing the giant, uh, one time I looked out my window and saw the <clears throat> giant, I don't know if it was the Queen Mary, one of these big giant cruise ships that rarely come up the Hudson River. And they're stories high out of the water. And most boats that come up there don't come up, don't do that. They only show up once in a while. Oh, every, you know, not often. So it was shocking to see it at first, you know, without knowing what you were looking at. That's like that thing coming up the Hudson River instead of going smooth sailing up the river till it sinks down 
beside uh, Pier 69 or whatever it is. That's like coming up there and banging the sides of the river and smashing into all the little small boats and knocking the ferries off their piers and grinding into the sides of the little uh, parks there and stuff like and the unique eateries. How dumb... Well, I, all right, that's too much. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? Or are you just constructing a reason why light uh, would interact with a warp machine? I ain't buying it. So, ooh, a little sideline there. As far as warp bubbles, back to reading my eloquence... As far as warp bubbles go and space-time, I am asking all to consider that the former is literally a made-up fantasy from a TV show. Writing an equation will not, not make it real, especially when it shows the energy requirements. A, similarly, space-time is a mathematical concept. You cannot isolate it in a test tube, and you certainly cannot engineer a craft out of it. Why? Because, again, it is only a concept and not a thing. These realities have to be faced. So I'm coattailing on his book, Lou's book, coattailing on their um, uh, image that Elizondo and Mellon released. Kudos. And riding this thing and saying again and using it to say these realities have to be faced if you want only if you want to make any progress okay if you don't want to be anti-gravity don't listen to me if you don't want to know what these things probably are doing don't listen to me go back to doing equations you're wasting your time with me Continuing with me, rote repetition of what everyone else says, uh, looking at you, somebody, a lot of you, everyone else says, will not conjure these things into reality. Like this coat, I got that from my late mother, too. Everyone else saying something, mm, that's often a red flag, isn't it? I won't even go there. <clears throat> so, continuing. These bubbles are light, with which you can do engineering and fabrication. And experimentation, Mr. Physicist. And theorizing, Mr. Physicist. And yes, that's all. What do you think? He, he writes or he edits the Entropy uh, Journal. And what is that? What, you know, what this, it all has to do with light. That's what it, you know. They usually, they will describe that and teach that to you with, well, heat that'll return to, and disorder that, they use that angle. Well, what con what is that? First off, heat is, basically, depending on who you, where you're standing, it's some, it, it's some, um, like I'm getting hot right now in here with this coat on. Um, I might even open the window. Hold on. No, it's too hot out there. Uh, I'll take it off or put on the air conditioning on the next break. It's uh, it's photonic. What is heat? It's vibrating uh, uh, molecules. Well, what's vibrating them? Certain wavelength. That's what's going on here. Certain wavelengths. So it's close. You know, it's close to astronomical physics, related and entropy. So. Um, Back to light. It can offset mass, as it is mass equivalent, and affect gravity as shown experimentally 
by Rancor, Tattersall, and Newman. Or is it Neumann? I don't know. Recently replicated here on YouTube by Wayne Ojala. Additionally, light bubbles can be used to protect from interstellar debris. That's the little red bubble. The force fields from Star Trek, as opposed to that warp nonsense, are actually based on a feasible concept. So that's not completely trash Star Trek. And I saw one of their movies on TV just by chance, and it was good. You know, I go back, I remember when the original series was original. Uh, in 1965, I think that came out, which I didn't watch it, it was a little over my head. I like uh, the, the other space cartoon thing. Lost in Space. It was kind of funny. But when the second reruns of the original Star Trek came out, I watched that. I guess that was about 8th or ninth grade. I don't know. Early 70s. I watched those. Then I watched every one of them. And I watched them again. And I watched the other one. Um, the Next Generation shows on repeat in the 90s. Not the originals. I don't think I watched the original. Anyway, so I don't mean to completely trash Star Trek with uh, Warp Drive. <clears throat> it's fun to watch as a special effect, even on TV. Uh, the force fields, are, as opposed to that Warp Drive. So yeah, you can have force fields and tractor beams too. That's another thing you can do with light. Matter of fact, that's what got me into this. Watching a balloon shoot up a shaft of light from the parting clouds. Woo! What a moment. It was like Newton wa falling off, uh, watching the apple for me. Okay, you can say I made that up. I'm not that clever to make it up. I had to actually see it. And what happens is that balloon, little lost balloon, in the shade, hits that light shaft from the giant Georgia clouds parting Flies right up that thing just like a tractor beam. Same principle, somehow. <clears throat> Especially, well, that's another story. That's too complex to get into now. So, continuing. Because light permeates the universe, your gigawatts, because he's talking about gigawatts from that other movie, and other things in life, including the nuclear power plant I worked at, is, well, I worked on two of them. Your gigawatts in the form of photonic energy are everywhere. You take it, you use it, you put it right back. You take it, you use it, you put it right back. After using it for a purpose far more reasonable then the ridiculous ripping of fabric of space-time. I was triggered, I admit it. <clears throat> it's uh, Ridiculous is a tough word, but it makes people focus. Yes, it requires effort to accomplish this. I admit that, but it is feasible. Do you admit that? Any of you? Do you deny it? It's time to unclench and stop clinging to a hundred-year-old concepts, which this space-time is. Oh, it's new. It's Einstein. No, he, he, that's a lot of optomechanics has happened since then. Okay? So let's incorporate that into our thinking. The light-matter interaction. Entire new fields of Physics and schools of engineering popping up, mostly around data and lasers and stuff. Not quite. They're touching on it. They're getting to it. A guy won a Nobel Prize for it. Two guys did. And one of them got made uh, Secretary of Energy. But he won his prize for his thing and he went into... He didn't stick with that. Anyway, <clears throat> because a logical extension of it <clears throat> goes to where I am telling you about, as do other things. 
Pardon me. <clears throat> Needed a sip. Because light permeates everywhere, your gigawatts are in the form of photonic energy everywhere. You take it, you use it. I read that. Yes, it requires effort. I read that. It takes time to unclench and stop clinging and stop clinging to the warp drives and clinging bitterly to, oh, you got to have an equation that doesn't really apply to the real world the way we need it to. Stop clinging and obfuscating because they are obfuscating what you are so very close to. He's so close. But then he has to tack on the warp drive nonsense. Because they all do it. They all repeatedly do it. Because everyone else is saying it, aren't they? Well, I'm not saying it, okay? Somebody has to be the one that doesn't say it. And that's me. C closing out, finally, I say, a search like pumping for an anti-gravity and nerve pump. Search and find me. For a clearer picture of the, and be free of the unnecessary, outdated, orthodox canards. Ooh, that's, that, but that's the kind of language that's going to take to move these people off that. Unnecessary, this coat's coming off. Oh. Unnecessary, outdated, orthodox Canards. So we move on to oh, more uh, warp drive. There's the uh, Bob Lazar version of warp drive, folks. We got secret sauce versions. We got equations out the yin yang that change supposedly change cosmological constants every other month. After you got to hear the stories, you got the secret sauces and. Hand waving, it's a secret. Patriotism, yeah. You got all kind of stuff. You got analogs you sell to the debrief magazine, you know. All right, another hard segue. We're hard segueing today into our rant about mathematics generally, okay? We beat up on people using that one concept as if you can engineer around it, which you can't. And now we're going to get on to the maths, the chin-stroking, fence-sitting mathematicians. Now, we also need to give them credit for at least being curious, but not that curious. When we have a, enough... Eyeballs and clicks and time. I understand. And besides, they're not as focused on this one thing as I am. But when they start talking about, uh, you know, where did the secret physics go and all that stuff, without looking at what's actually missing. All right, step back. You know, what if they were doing something? Well, what would it be? Look at the field of mathematics and look at what's missing. How do, you, how do you step back and take a meta picture of it? I know it's out there somewhere, but I'm not a mathematician, okay? You know that. I'm an engineer. That's as far as I got. On math, which was a lot of math. They said when you're done with math, the next stuff after every, you've taken everything, you've got to take theory next, then you're going to be into a uh, major. And then in my <clears throat> discipline, industrial engineering, you tack on a ton of statistics the other engineers don't get. So we get a lot of math. I had a lot of it. But it was a long time ago. I assure you. Wow. <clears throat> 45 years, whatever it was. And you don't use that ma all that math or much of it. <clears throat> you could be working in a nuclear plant, being an engineer there, and you're not, we're using, <clears throat> you're not using the, just high-end math. So, uh, I'm telling these people, you don't know what you're missing here. And uh, from across the river, I can see the big picture. 
and I can give you something to do. And that's listed here. I don't know if you, <clears throat> I need to reread all this again. But in my speech, link, link, on that webpage linked in the beginning, there's a couple of paragraphs of math that is missing. I am going to read it, but it's fast. I'm not going to interrupt myself, so it'll go fast. Talking about a lot, a lot of these mathematicians and critics of mathematicians that are this general idea. Unfortunately, I have to get a little bit vulgar here because that's the f first thing I came into my mind when this, back in May, May 31st, this stuff started popping up and getting on my nerves. So I figure I'll spew it all out now while I'm motivated and link back to it later as needed. Well, now it's needed a couple of months later. Uh, Kurt Jemungle says something, hand-waving mathematicians, so, oh, yeah, yeah, may as well read what he said. I'm answering this, because it was dead on point, and it's something that was grinding on me for months. Kurt, when mathematicians say hand-waving disparagingly about someone else's work, it means the person has... A, insight. B, realism. C, something to say. It also means that D, he is right, because that's what critics say when they can't find anything more negative. And he quotes Nassim Taleb, all right? So that sets me off, and I say, what is it called when they're saying A, B, and C about things they themselves do not have equations for? In other words, they shoot their mouth off a lot, but they don't have equations for everything. And the ones they're working the hardest on are the most, I dare say, irrelevant to most of us people. They're very important. The 27th dimension might be real. We got to get to the bottom of this, folks. But don't leave uh, huge swaths of mathematical realms behind because you want to get way out over your skis. And get your, you know, people are going to remember you just as much if you solve a real problem that's in, <clears throat> in, within your lifetime that affects within your lifetime. So what I'm saying is to these guys, here's the vulgarity. Kids out of the room, cover your ears. Tits on a bull. An old saying that means a thing is useless. And I'm saying at some point, these people are useless. All the way up to Weinstein's buddy and back. Oh, I, I always forget his name. As soon as I see his face, I forget his name. And I quote myself about all these uh, missing equations. I'm going to read them now again. I'm already <clears throat> over my limit. Quote, that said, I will go on to suggest that equations around supercavitating bubbles and fluids within variable gravitational fields might be one way to describe this, or it might be done with optomechanical force studies for light matter interactions in a gravitational field. But right now, there's not even consensus on photon mass for thrust, despite photons being the drivers of most of it, or barely even the notion of fields of light and air or water with the force of gravity within is diminished that I have ever seen. That's your Libor Newman and Rancourt and Tattersall. Where are the equations for these experimentalists? Where? They're showing you something very interesting in reality and you don't want to <clears throat> approach it. You think you're going to get a Nobel Prize by uh, writing something about the 17th uncared about dimension. Nor have I ever seen a model for a point of mass deterministically controlling its own light bubble in a gravitational field. Perhaps something like that exists or should exist. Four, supercavitating hypersonics and submarines. Hint, hint. But I doubt it. You intelligent spooks that are chasing fireballs and parachutes. I hope you're secretly doing this because somebody's going to and you're a bunch of unserious, woke clowns. 
Is such a region of curved space less curved in that instance? Are the tensors and cones any different under such conditions? Are the gravitons no longer as coherently aligned? I happen to think so. I, I happen to think so. Uh, but that is inconsequential. I'm no mathematician because I don't think anyone has ever thought about some of these things mathematically. You should. Kurt and... Um, What's Weinstein's first name? Oh, boy. Screen doors on submarines. That's a less vulgar way of saying useless. And I continue quoting myself a little bit more. I would also like to ask somebody more magnetically proficient than myself to explain how the mass of a light entangling and by entangling, I mean in the plain meaning of the word, not the spooky action with Alice and Bob stuff, how the mass of a light entangling object over time losing its mass equivalence at a rate greater than the local gravitational field's acceleration requires to be effective, take a breath, may be likened to a snapshot of negative mass. Do you pay attention if I say it that way? Because it acts just like negative mass. I would think there might be some math already done out there by now, but I tend to doubt it. Or perhaps we can update the rocket equation, y'all. Shout out the Huntsville Rocket Buggy Whip City, y'all. What the hell have you done lately in public that we can use as a species? Or are you behind closed doors doing what I'm saying here? Eh, who knows? What are we gonna do with a rocket equation? Oh, we're gonna we're gonna update it. We're gonna make it continuous. Put the rocket in a mitigated gravitational field of its own making, and wrap a slippery light bulb around it to reduce drag, friction, and inertial mass. Like I just said, how do we rewrite F equals m a? For a body in motion, when a major component of that body is not mass. But mass equivalence, which is true of a rocket anyway, but it's completely true of this. All right, that's the end of that. So, that's my beef against these uh, mathematicians and mathematical critics. You got big holes here, too. And here's what I got to say about it. We're citing fair use here, as we're also a movie criticism show. As everyone knows, people tune in for the movie criticisms. And I recommend you see this movie. It's called Copland. Actually, it's free right now on Google. Although you might have to watch commercials. So there's your money back, Google. Um... If you don't pay uh, $12 a month. Anyway, we approve this movie. You should go spend money on it. Even if it's not free for you. So, citing our criticism. We like this movie. Here's a little clip from it. Reminds me of something. And besides the church traffic and the cats in the trees and all that other bullshit, okay? There isn't much here for you to do, to keep your mind busy. But I look at you, Sheriff, and I see a man who's waiting for something to do. And here I am. Here I am saying, Sheriff, I got something for you to do. That's those equations. That whole chunks of math are missing. And this stuff's going to be flying before you... Numb nuts ever get around to it at this rate. But I'm just going on the record now and telling you that. You know. It's a problem, but we that's okay. Who flew without equations that are so important to this space-time crowd? Hmm, let's see. Who envisioned man flight? What before he well, he might have thrown in a few equations, I don't know. Lana de Terzi, the, I believe it was a Jesuit, who envisioned 
vacuum objects floating and flying and pulling things and building little ships on them. All right, the Montgolfier brothers from France who built the first hot air balloon. They did it without equation. So did the Wright brothers. And I'm sure the early Chinese rocket scientists were blowing up tin cans off fences as they should, with the gunpowder they invented. They're like, hey, not only does it make a noise, it moves stuff. Okay, you got an equation for that? Wang Chung? No, well, it works anyway, all right? But you mathematicians out there looking for math to back up, how could this stuff possibly happen? Uh, uh, fireballs and uh, parachutes, uh, you don't have any math. Uh, we don't need it. But we can show you now where you're missing it. Oh, here we go. We're winding down, folks. Someday. Um, <clears throat> boy, was this a find. Uh, oh, here's a little comment. Here's my favorite equations. One of my favorite equations around the warp drive. There it is, folks. Drink it in, because you're getting it all the time anyway. Well, here's a quote from <clears throat> Mutual Follow on X, formerly known as Twitter, from my friend Sergey Karavashkin. He says, It is shown that, that modern mathematics has completely severed ties with phenomenology. Hmm, you don't say. Having gone to, into the invention of mirages and phase mongering, sounds brutal, huh? Having distorted classical formalism together with mainstream physics, that's the problem with a lot of these people. The math has done it. They're like, a thing can't exist unless there's an equation for it immediately. Or ahead of time. Wrong! The physicists. We can build around an equation. Or we can build around a mathematical concept. Without knowing what that is as a physical object. Okay? That's what a problem is here, folks. All these smart people. Okay? But they lack something. They lack something here. They lack something that a technical person like me, who also went to law school, and you could get it other ways, and they could get it from reading the history of science or the philosophy of science. But you have to have logical coherence. Or as a phrase I saw recently, logical sophistication. Just because Einstein said that, and that might mean this, and someone else says it might mean that, and you and it might, and you take those two and you stack them on top of each other and you stretch them sideways, that must be true too. Because Einstein, Einstein, you know, you're full of crap. You add up with a pile of crap. So... You have to think through things through logically. And that's what is not happening. And I'm demonstrating that here today. And that is what I am able to add to this. And that's why I see this. <clears throat> so, other people can do it. It's not a, you know, superpower. It's a developed skill or something. And uh, you build on the what you have to build with and I'm blessed with the ability to do it so so are a lot of other people so <clears throat> for some people all you got to do is switch like that and stop saying what everyone else says and thinking what everyone else thinks all the time or too much of the time so what do you say here So we're done with Sergey, aren't we? Yeah. 
Oh, I thought he brought up something. I thought he said the magic word. <clears throat> Someone else did. That's right. That's right. It was Ashton. It was a guy answering Ashton Forbes. No, it was me answering him back in May, early May. That's where I learned the word and forgot the word and forgot how to find the word and all that. And the word is reification. Let's use it in a sentence, shall we? Okay. And we're talking about here Ashton's found footage here. And people are going on and on about stuff. And a guy called Witsit says to Ashton, you keep saying Tesla was right. And then you turn around and say things like, quote, to create a space-time bubble. Tesla said space-time was a reification of conceptual abstractions. He said that space cannot curve for the simple fact that it can have no properties. It is, well, this tweet's bigger than I thought, it is a conceptual privation, meaning it does not exactly, does not actually exist. Then he goes on and says something I disagree with. But he may, he may back it out later, I'm not sure. So we skip down to what he says. Long story short, you are combining two frameworks that fundamentally co can't coexist. Yes, so he's, someone's doing that somewhere else. And um, that's what's happening all over this stuff. You'll see people with very good insights, talented at understanding equations, even though it's not even their full-time job or anything, uh, good at knowing physical concepts that are real, you know, uh, detailed knowledge on this, whatever, but they start stacking and conflating and mix and matching, and it's easy to do, especially if you're new at this stuff. Even if you're old at it, it's all the time. So we can expect an Ashton Forbes might, uh, Forbes might step in it <clears throat> because everyone steps in it. I probably am somewhere, but not on this. If someone can point it out, <laughs> you'd be doing me a favor. But again, he says, you're combining two frameworks that fundamentally cannot exist. And that's what happens. You pick and choose one nice thing from here and there and mix and match and suddenly you're champion of space time. Well, it doesn't work that way. You got to building block it. You got to dumb it down and build it up one dumb point at a time. As I hope I did with that one, two, three drawing and then add four to it for the big picture. That's the frame. Do you do the frame first or you do it last? You do it, yeah, doesn't matter. As long as you get the points. <clears throat> All right. So, point with him was, thank you again, sir. Mr. Nah, I lost him. Sir, uh, not Sir J. Witsit. Where are you, Witsit? There he is. So he goes on and explains more... Um, about that conflation, and I forget, that's, I don't want to say it's not relevant, <clears throat> but I forget what it is. <clears throat> so whatever it was, I jumped on what he said by saying, doubling down, pulling out of whatever he said and using it to my advantage by saying, quote, no, I'm quoting Quoting me, quoting him, or quoting somebody here, Tesla said that space-time was a reification of conceptual abstractions. He said that space, yes, space-time cannot occur for the simple fact it can have no properties. He said that about space. Well, 
and when you conflate it with space-time, and you come up with a thing that makes sense mathematically, but not physically, then you get into mix and match jumbles that uh, put everyone off track. They sound good. When you take piece by piece, they are good. But those pieces don't flow together. That would be like me speaking Russian all of a sudden here and saying, then back to English and saying, right? Yeah, it just doesn't, it doesn't flow, it doesn't go. Math, uh, what I just call it, uh, philosophical sophistication is what you need. And you need to make, don't be afraid to slow down, dumb it down, break it down, add it up. Does it make sense logically? Mm. You have to, you learn that in law school for sure, and working in that field especially around technical objects like I did for years. And you learn <laughs> engineers aren't too logical. You know, they know their facts, but when they put them together, oh boy, forget it sometimes. So, uh, yeah, logic, uh, law school, and philosophy, and philosophy majors do very well in law school. Uh, often. And everyone thinks that's an easy course to, uh, <clears throat> it isn't. And it really applies there. And uh, I picked it up in later years and through practice and uh, stuff like that and a lot of reading. Philo philosophy, uh, philo philosophy books. And uh, you have to have that. And it's not here. It's, that's how you solve it. And people are missing it. <clears throat> so that's why I'm beating your eardrums with it once in a while. Thanks for listening. So we're here with Fred Flintstone again. So uh, I'm uh, yes. So, so I'm commenting on that Tesla thing, saying correct. It's only math, not a thing, literally, not a thing, literally. Now, how much more? Are we in the millenniums or the X's or what? Generation current is saying an old man saying. Literally, not a thing. Yeah, I'm still pretty cool. <laughs> sure. As such, it is not actionable. You have to pay. It, you have to understand the lingo of the current times. As such, it is not actionable here in the real world. This is a place where Tesla conceived what would it could happen, and with the help help of others who were paying attention, made them happen. Okay, Tesla wasn't dealing with mathematical concepts. He's dealing with nuts and bolts. He's putting them together in his mind, watching them turn, watching those motors, watching that AC, alternating current. How does it make sense? Boy, you got to think that through and visualize that through and then draw it. And then... Formally draw it and all that. That's what, and that's stuff that was real. It's hard, you know, people didn't know that electric, you know, the waves being real was pretty uh, cutting edge in those days, but they are real. They, they remain real because they're based around what? Electrons, which are real, which are based, which were what? Two photons wrapped around each other. This is another version of taking those same waves and using them but you got to use them in a real way not in the mathematically conceptual way only so there's fred what's fred doing what is he doing there uh i guess he was oh he was counting math he was doing math on his fingers which are real things so I think we move on from, I think we're moving, well, are we done? Sergey, are we done? Okay, oh, one last little final. This is kind of a, it's not off topic, it's on topic. Looking into the real world here again with our friend Joshua Bertrand. I hope it's not Bertrand. We're calling him Bertrand right now. And um, 
into the reality of the real current world right now. And he's he's up on the most current work around, you would call it buoyancy more than light pumping, but it's the same thing. And for some reason, that is... I've discussed him before. I guess some new information came... Oh, yeah, some new papers came out. And some... I, oh, yeah, okay, this... Uh, Kirkpatrick report. Not the UAP task force, but the Arrow report. Okay, <clears throat> Between that, mystery drones moving entire flights off Langley Air Force Base, Chinese spy balloons, which were only eight months ago. Was that this year? I don't even, yes. Um, he say this guy's got his eyes focused on the latest, what could it be? Um, so, you know, but... Anomalous objects. What could they be testing in our skies or using, if, depending on if it's us or if it's the enemy, floating around uh, already right now? Okay. Now, he's taking these ideas as to what they are right now, this instant. I think them out into the future further. But agree with what he's saying. His focus is on on right now, and he has a whole theory around how certain technologies were stolen by certain Chinese people um, from Los Alamos. And he's all over it with patent numbers, days, dates, times, whatever. And he's just saying, hey man, look out for what's coming. And he does that in financial markets and other things. And he's an observer of the present and future, and near future. And uh, so I link him up here. But there is no real segue there. There's no horror. There's no, yeah, there's no, other than Kirkpatrick coming up with nonsense that, um, these things might be, and me find I forgot. I have some also some fresh scientific reports on what that, how this stuff, how what I'm saying is coming true in real time, and Joshua is telling you how what it is true in real time. Okay, I'm ten minutes ahead of him or whatever. Let's just say between the both of us and Wayne, who I linked his who's experimenting his way into this stuff with the, showing it with the uh, experiments he's doing. What I'm saying is, is if you throw the warp drive out and the other far-fetched stuff, uh, your answer is shaping up for you if it isn't already. It's right here. So, you buyers of Lou Elizondo's book, followers of this channel, new eyeballs coming because of that, this is what you're looking at here. So, yes, we are winding down here. I see the green emoji of Ruby's tweet, which takes us out because it's our closing benediction. And nothing is more important right now. So let's go back to our lessons learned here. We learned some lessons. We came up with some stuff. We think we're on to these uh, deep state spooks and them aliens and the rest of them. And even if we're not, we're going to push forward because we know that this stuff, this is your future free energy. This is your flying car. It's not coming from a television show. It's not coming from fanciful equations. It's not coming from huge, huge chunks of mathematics that are going missing. While these 
people chase the 27th dimension and try to elbow the guy beside them or the girl to get a, get some brown nose points. Or what, you know, it, it's an academic game, I know. It's like the corporate game I was in. It's politics, it's all this and that. But once in a while you get something done, you know. While you're elbowing the other person, the company makes some money, hopefully, somewhere amongst all this political jockeying. Uh, so let's uh, meet because there's people on the outside like me and like the other people I've mentioned. Oh, there's Colton Lee there. I want to mention his name because he follows this channel and he <clears throat> threw me this, uh, this paper, which is good. And I leapfrogged onto that by saying I, I already saw it in another version. Or thanks for updating me here, whatever. That's why they, <clears throat> I'm looking at that. And uh, so we're on to you. We're on to you. We're on to you. We're way ahead of all of you. And we're trying to inform everybody. And do something with it if we can. So on our way out the door, burdened by, by what has been, <laughs> let's look at what we're burdened by. And maybe that'll go away soon, huh? Yeah, let's hope so. Ruby, once again, thank you for singling me out in this tweet years ago and giving us our closing benediction. From my uh, contacts and so on, uh, I, I think although there will be enough information coming out to finally lay to rest that this is not a tinfoil hat subject no. and there's a reality to it yeah. and uh, <clears throat> the government is making a concerted effort to to uh, learn more about it. Hmm. Um, I think any truly deep state increased knowledge is likely not to come out. I don't see all the barriers falling. Understand. Understand and understood. And that's why we're here to keep the technological pressure on. And we will see you again soon because it's time for me to wave goodbye. Where am I? Here's me only. Wave goodbye and thank you all for stopping by. And we'll see you again next time. And now it is time to give you the musical outro with some goofy images I made and stuff and other stuff. Still pretty rainy out there. Uh, and we'll see you next time. Thanks. I do appreciate it. Like, share, subscribe, comment, and all that. See you later. So to see you later, I have to leave. So why don't I do that?